body, CPPCC, comes to an end. China's industrial production has accelerated in the first two months of 2007, adding pressure on the central bank to raise interest rates. And as part of today's International Consumer Rights Day, we take a look at how China is protecting its consumers. Hello and welcome to this edition of Biz China on CCTV International from Beijing. I'm Rich Hengang. Thursday marks World Consumer Rights Day. To commemorate the event, we have a series of stories, including an interview with attorney Edward Lehman later on in the show on how you can best protect your rights as a consumer in China. But first of all, in our top story, China's political advisors have wrapped up their annual session. And this year ends the five-year term for the CPPCC members, who have looked back with satisfaction on their job. CCTV's Feng Jingchao has more. Oh. The fifth session of the 10th CPPCC National Committee has run its two-week course. China's top adviser says the ideas that the members have shared will be crucial for the policymakers in the government. During the session, we discussed the documents, including the government work report. We have contributed many good suggestions for adjusting the economic structure and the way of growth, enhancing environmental protection and saving energy, pushing for reform and innovation, and promoting social and economic development. The advisors have raised more than 4,000 proposals involving all sectors of the society, and this year they focused much more on issues of public concern. We hope we can bring up the voices of the people. I have submitted eight proposals on education, housing, health care, and anti-corruption. My proposals are about education. I hope fairness in education could be realized and the quality of education could be improved in universities. The close of the session also ends the five-year term of the members. They say they have done their best to play the role as researchers and advisors. During the past five years, we have conducted a lot of special research on our country's major concerns, especially income distribution, so as to narrow the social gap. I've submitted 143 proposals through my term. I've been calling for environmental protection, reducing energy use, enhancing modern agricultural development, and other issues that affect common people. The advisory body plays a critical role in China's politics, bringing suggestions on public concerns to the government. Now the advisors are ready to become more active, not just in voicing their concerns, but also in pushing for responses from the government on how those concerns will be taken care of. Feng Chao, CCTV, Beijing. Relations across the Taiwan Straits are a special concern of CPPCC members from the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. Our reporter Wu Hanying takes a look at their expectations for peace and development across the streets, with Hong Kong playing an important role. CPPCC member Shi Xiangpeng has put forth two proposals on how to make travel between the Chinese mainland and Taiwan more convenient. He proposed the shipping links between Kingmen, Matsu, and Xiamen, Fuzhou as the best choices for non-stop travel. The mini links will help realize the three direct links of mail, trade, and air, and shipping services across Taiwan streets. Travel via the roads is more secure and saves us money. Li Jiaying, who conducts business on the Chinese mainland Hong Kong and Taiwan, has promised to do her best to achieve a peaceful reunification across the streets. As members from Hong Kong ACR, we have the advantage of human resources and location. We should play an enhanced role. The CPPCC members from Hong Kong have also expressed satisfaction with the central government's work in dealing with their proposals. Cross-street relations have maintained a peaceful and steady momentum in recent years. Last year, indirect trade volume between the Chinese mainland and Taiwan set a record exceeding 100 billion U.S. dollars. And Taiwan residents made almost four and a half million visits to the Chinese mainland. CCTV. 
Developing renewable energy to ease high energy consumption was one of the main focal points for the MPC and CPPCC sessions. Also in Beijing, an international conference on new villages with renewable energy was held on Thursday. Jointly sponsored by Chinese and Dutch governments, the conference discussed how to develop and utilize renewable energy and how to promote sustainable development. Nearly 200 delegates from academic, government and international organizations attended the event. The conference also commended projects which have been jointly initiated by China and the Netherlands in western China. The projects were launched in 2003 to promote rural renewable energy. The conference says the projects have not only improved the living conditions and the environment for rural workers, they are also increasing the farmers' livelihood.